Every single year, there is an epic battle between Samsung and, a and Apple for who has the best flagship phone. You know, Samsung always pushes the boundaries with what a smartphone is capable of, and the Galaxy S22 Ultra is the result of that. And on the other hand, Apple often plays catch up when it comes to features. But when they finally implement it, Apple's version ends up being the best on the market and sets the mark for what other manufacturers try to catch up to. And to some extent, this is what the iPhone 14 Pro Max feels like. This is Kevin the Tech Ninja in this is the Galaxy S22 Ultra versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max real world comparison. You know, the big difference between both the phones, they gotta be designed. You know, the Galaxy S22 Ultra has this rectangular finish and the iPhone 14 Pro Max is more beveled. You know, the edges on the iPhone do feel sharper and it's like a straight cut, it's like machine precision, right? Versus the smooth edges on the Galaxy S22 Ultra that sort of just melts into your hand. You know, Samsung uses an armor aluminum frame as its base with Corning Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the front and also on the back of the phone. Whereas Apple uses stainless steel frame with a ceramic shield front. Now, to me, neither phone really skips out when it comes to hardware. Now, I would say each device offers full IP68 water and dust resistance, and they also offer a solid selection of colors. Now, speaking of colors, don't get too, you know, up in arms about it because my sponsor, Dbrand, can keep it spicy for you. For less than $20, you could change the way your device looks by installing their premium skins. You get a fresh looking device, you could change the colors. So hit my links down below to set that up and Dbrand your device. Now, let's talk a bit about each phone's display. On the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you find a slightly larger 6.8 inch AMOLED screen with a peak brightness of 1750 nits. The screen is also curved, which makes it better for watching content. For the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the display is actually a big upgrade in design. You know, gone is that notch and replaced by something that Apple calls Dynamic Island. <laughs> we'll talk about the island soon, but the display is 6.7 inches. It's a Super Retina XDR OLED with a peak brightness of 2000 nits. And that actually makes it the brightest smartphone display in the current market. To me, both screens are really good, but the iPhones will be more reliable in direct sunlight. Now, features like one to 120 hertz refresh rate, support is available on both phones. While Samsung has had it for many years, this year, the iPhone 14 Pro Max finally gets an always on display. So a few things, let's, let's clear some stuff up. Firstly, how it fades into the background is just super clean looking. Also, you have an actual image back there, not just a few icons and a small banner. I love how it's always on, like literally. But if you have an Apple Watch and you leave the room, it'll turn off. If it's in your pocket, it'll turn off. If you flip the screen over, it'll turn off. I will say the always on display is a little bit bright. And I did find when I had it bedside, it emitted too much light for my liking. But if you do use profiles and you put your phone in sleep mode, it does turn off the always on display. Now, Samsung hasn't made any major changes to its always on display in a long time, but I'm sure they will now. <laughs> you know, Apple has tossed their hat into the arena and then Samsung's gonna do something to sort of rebuttal that. But I do say Samsung's Although it's minimal, it doesn't bother me at all. And it doesn't have any battery impact since it's so minimal and I don't have a problem with it. Now let's talk about cutouts and, and notches and all those things at the very top of the phone. Now, Samsung over the years has perfected it in my opinion. And they have this thing called the O dot design where it's literally just a dot with the cameras. And they also have them playing with under the screen cameras too that you see in the fold. Now with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the Dynamic Island. I have to say Dynamic Island like that. I don't know why. It actually becomes a characteristic of the phone where software kind of plays with it too. So, so watch this. You know, when you get a notification, when you're recording voice memos or anything in between, the phone takes full advantage of the Dynamic Island to effectively use the pill cutout shape almost making it disappear and it becomes a feature rather than a hindrance. Now in watching videos, it does take up more space and sometimes it can look a bit wonky when you're watching video compared to the ODOT design, which is small and subtle. On the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you have an A16 Bionic CPU and six gigabytes of RAM, which 
makes the phone very fast. You know, everything on the iPhone is hiccup free and that's what you'd expect. With iOS 16, you have even a refreshed user experience with more customization. So it doesn't really feel like you're restricted too much by software. But of course, for maximum customization, you wanna go with Android. You know, that's where the Galaxy S22 Ultra comes into play. Now inside you get a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with up to 12 gigabytes of RAM and again, there's nothing to complain about when it comes to performance. You know, Samsung's One UI 4.1 is polished and refined, and there's tons of great software features like split screen, picture in picture, and floating applications. Now taking things even one step further, the S22 Ultra has the Notes DNA, so you have an additional S Pen built into it. So you can do all your note taking features right on your phone. It's something easy to do and something the iPhone can't do at all. I'm not saying it's something that's gonna sell me on a phone, but there's a lot of people I know that are note users that really love the S Pen and marking up documents and things like that. They use it and that is the reason they love having a Samsung phone. While each smartphone supports 5G, the iPhone 14 Pro Max now only supports an eSIM. So hardware SIM cards are not a thing anymore for the iPhone, at least for the USA models. But then you compare that to the S22, you know, you have hardware SIM support. So if you travel a lot and you need to swap out SIMs when you go between countries, eSIM can make that much more difficult for you. And my eSIM process was an absolute nightmare. That video is linked down below. Now, did you know that 97% of new images are taken on smartphones? And did you know 90% of you watching right now are not subscribed? Hit that subscribe button down below right now to support the channel and join me on this journey. Okay, so it's natural that we're gonna talk about the camera. You know, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is using a 48 megapixel primary sensor for the first time ever, along with 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto camera. This effectively gives it a 2X and 3X optical zoom support and the ability to take more detailed images. The 48 megapixel sensor is 65% larger for low light performance. And then you have the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens that takes better macro photos. The S22 Ultra gives a huge 108 megapixel primary sensor with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and two 10 megapixel telephoto cameras for 3X and 10X optical zoom and up to 100X digital zoom. It's safe to say for zoom, the S22 Ultra zooms past the competition. <laughs> is ahead of the competition. And here are a set of images between the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max in a variety of different scenarios. You know, I feel like the iPhone 14 Pro Max photos are a bit more natural, especially when it involves skin tones, where the Galaxy S22 Ultra goes for more of a saturated look, which looks great for social media, especially when you look at the sky, but it does sway away from reality at times. Now, the big leap for the iPhone 14 Pro Max this year aside from the lens, it's videography. While the S22 Ultra has better specs, up to 8K video alongside with 4K 60 frames and 4K 30 frames, videos do not look as polished as the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Okay, now we're doing cinematic video on the iPhone, but this is the front-facing camera, and this is portrait video on the Galaxy S22 Ultra front-facing camera. Once again, let me know what you think. How does it look? How does it sound? I definitely would like to know. Okay, this is portrait video on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and this is cinematic video on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Let me know which one looks better, which one sounds better. Let me know what you think, how they look, and let me know what you think, how they sound. Okay, this is the front-facing camera on both phones, and this is now kind of a mid-light setting. Um, before, I had studio lighting. I turned off the studio lighting, and now I'm just in my regular lighting. So. Let me know what you think about how they look without great lighting. You know, I will say cinematic mode on the iPhone in 4K looks absolutely stunning. I have used it several times in different scenarios and yeah, like I'm very impressed on how it looks. It is super accurate and that is a mode that I'm gonna be using a whole lot more now. Now on top of your regular iPhone 14 video features, this year you also get action mode, which is similar to Samsung super steady mode. While Samsung has had this for many years, the way the iPhone does it is actually more impressive. It allows you to film at 2.8K at 60 frames per second. Look at this comparison side by side of me running through the streets of New York. What do you think? Looks good to me. Given that these phones sport the best processors available and sizable batteries, endurance and battery life shouldn't be much of an issue for either phone and 
That's true. Now inside the S22 Ultra, there is a 5,000 milliamp battery. It is capable of 45 watt super fast charging and 15 watt fast wireless charging. This gives you around five to six hours of screen on time on 5G with the recharge taking approximately one hour. The iPhone 14 Pro Max might have a smaller battery at 4323 milliamp, but the way it lasts is actually just as good. Now you do have 20 watt charging support, which is 50% in 30 minutes, so it's, it's half the speed, and you do have 15 watt wireless charging with MagSafe. Because I haven't used the 14 Pro Max like a full month, I can't give you definitive battery verdict, but of course you stick around for my full review after 30 days and I'll break it down for you. But until then, let's kind of wrap this comparison up. I'm getting tired. You know, both smartphones have features that answers whatever you throw at them. And there's a few factors you need to consider before making a choice between two, these two phones. Now I know you're tired of me saying this and I say it in every video, but it's ecosystem, right? You got a Samsung or you got an Apple ecosystem. Making that choice is simple, but when you wanna consider price, the iPhone 14 being new, expect to spend a lot more money unless you're trading in an old iPhone on their official website. Well, the S22 Ultra is an older phone, right? It's at the halfway point, and you're gonna find better deals for it. And given how close both phones are, is actually, at this point, better money for the value. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't go wrong with either phone. I think individually, both phones have their strong suit, and both phones really don't have a downside too much. It just depends on which phone you like using and which one works best for you. Now, personally, I am an iPhone user, but what I like to use the most at home is gonna be my Z Fold 4, just because I love the integration with it and I love how you can do multiple screens and, and all those things that suit me the best. So it's always about what suits you the best when you're making your purchasing decision. Anyways, guys, down below, I have links to all of my favorite accessories for both of these devices. Make sure you check them out. They are affiliate links. It really helps the channel, helps me continue to make great content, and helps all that stuff. Anyways, guys, Kevin, the Tech Ninja, have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.